What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about my most ambitious how to play yet. We are going to finally cover the boogeyman in the room, the deck everybody complains about, the one you need, a large IQ to pilot correctly. That's not necessarily true. Today we are talking about Turbo Lost Box. This is one of the most interactive decks a player can pick up in the format, and that's how I'm going to describe it as interactive. The deck requires you to be engaged and you to be aware of your game plan. Does that make it hard? Depends. I do think it definitely rewards players who want to be involved the whole game, and this is for you. So if you enjoy the content, let me know down below what I did right. If you have more experience with the Lost Box than two months, which is all I have at the moment, be sure to let me know what players can do on top of what they see in today's video. So we're gonna break down what to expect in today's video. There is a lot to cover, so we're trying a new approach here to try to cover everything that you should know. We are talking What's the Lost Engine? I get that question a lot. What's the Lost Box? Distinctions between variants. Some key cards in the deck that you should be aware of, that you should be prioritizing. Considerations and text. If you don't like my list, what are other cards on the table? I definitely think it's always good to keep your options open because the metagame develops locally at a different pace than the online and then at the, the regional level. The Skeleton, so the, the starting point I would recommend for the Obsidian Flames, the 151, and even the Paradox Rift, that's where my starting point would be. So you're good for a couple formats, as well as the deck list that I have been using, updated to 151, that will probably see small changes in the next set, but not much. And then last but not least, the tried and true matchup guide. So the matchup guide, you know the drill, we're gonna run through 10 of the popular decks, and I'm gonna give you the ins and outs and the general concept that you should be thinking towards, because every game with Lost Box is different. You'll never see the same two games. You'll have tougher choices. You'll have uh, very weird choices. You'll have scenarios that you don't expect so there's no point in me just playing a game and showing you, oh, this is how I got there. Instead, I'd rather give you the ideology behind the Lost Box and how you can get there on your own and read and react accordingly. So first up, what is the Lost Engine? So the Lost Engine was reintroduced with the Pokemon expansion Lost Origin in 2022. It did exist in previous iterations. It was a little different, but right now we're focusing on the 2022 one. By sending your cards to the Lost Zone, you're trading resources, so your cards, because they're permanently removed from the game, for access to a powerful mechanic, AKA the Lost Engine. The key numbers when you're putting cards in the, lo the Lost Zone to be aware of. So four unlocks the first stage. Seven, then things start to get interesting. That's like your stage two. And then last but not least is number 10. The floodgates are off, everything is accessible to you and that's where the magic happens. You have achieved all of the levels of the Lost Engine and you have it all at your fingertips. It is disgusting. And of course, we're gonna take a quick look at the, the drivers of the Lost Engine. So they make us go to where we want. That's why it's an engine, is they're driving us to that those numbers, the four, seven, and 10. So Colrus is a supporter from Lost Origin. Look at the top five cards of your deck, put three into your hand, toss two in the Lost Zone. That's not bad, so we're gonna be trying to play that almost every turn until we get to 10. Comfy, a flower selecting ability is all you're paying attention to here. Once during your turn, if this Pokemon's in the active spot, you look at the top two cards of your deck, one of them goes to your hand, one of them goes to the Lost Zone. So many Lost Box players will put two to three Comfies down and they'll switch between them. So we'll explain more as we go. So between the Culverse and the Comfy, there's certain numbers you'll wanna hit each and every turn. Keep yourself on pace with what you are trying to achieve. So that's the Lost Engine in a nutshell. What's a Lost Box? I hear a lot of people asking me, what is a Lost Box? Lost Box is just shorthand community slang for Lost Zone Toolbox. A toolbox is just a deck that focuses on multiple different attackers rather than just one or two that synergize well together. So we have three, four, maybe five attackers in this deck that all have their uses depending on what we see or what's in front of us. We, we're trying to grab a different screwdriver or wrench for the scenario, and I think that's fantastic. Cramorant auto include because it has an incredible ability if you have four cards in the lost zone this pokemon attacks for free and it does 110 damage for free that allows us to allocate our energy elsewhere on the board the crammer is pretty much an auto include in all lost box decks this one is nine out of ten decks will play mirage gate so mirage gate can only be played if you have seven cards in the lost zone so that's the second stage of our lost zone camp search your deck for up to two basic energy of different types and you may attach them to your pokemon in any way you like this allows you to become the toolbox it allows you to tailor your deck to the Pokemon that you want to include. So if you want to deal with a certain typing, you can include energies to counter that typing. The whole card pool is at your disposal with Mirage Gate and Cramorant. And of course, we're talking about the boogeyman, the undisputed king of the Lost Zone engine, Sableye. This is why the deck is so damn good. Doesn't matter what the rest of the deck is. For one Psychic Energy, Lost Mine, you can only use this attack if there are 10 or more cards in the Lost Zone. That is the final stage of the Lost Engine. That's what you're working toward. You can play 
place 12 damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon in any way you like. You can set up checkmate situations. You can uh, finish off attackers that might not have been cleanly taken out by your other attackers in the deck. Sableye puts your opponent in a very uncomfortable position, and we haven't really had an answer for it yet. I don't think they're gonna have an answer for it. They have a few cards down the line that I'm not even gonna fret about. That's why we're still talking about it today. But Sableye has been such an impressive force for the past year, and I don't think it's going anywhere. So these are all pretty much auto includes in a lost box. Now we're gonna quickly talk about the variant. So first up, we got Giratina V-Star. Before you come at me in the comments, yes, it is considered a toolbox. There are multiple attackers. They are abusing all of the Lost Engine cards as well as Giratina. So it's more centralized, and I honestly recommend it as an easier pick up and play, but that's okay. We look at it like three stages. Giratina is easier to pick up. Turbo Lost Box, which is uh, symbolized here by our Dragonite. And then of course, Kyogre. Kyogre, you could argue, is one of the toughest decks to play, or Kyogre is the more complicated way to win. They all have their pros and their cons, but they are all essentially tool box emerged from all of the lost boxes trying to fight for supremacy. Giratina I've covered on the channel already. Your Dragonite we're going to talk about today and if you want to put me through any more torture let me know in the comments below that you would like to see me cover Kyogre with a breakdown. All of these decks function similarly but will take different routes to achieve their win condition. Sableye is the common thread between all three of them. It sets up so much math, it trades with so many decks, sometimes you can just rely on Sableye. Once you get to 10, Sableye can outpace other decks, and that's that's the win condition that a lot of these decks have. That's what puts them at the top, time in and time out, regardless of what they see. Sableye is your problem solver. But anyway, we gotta keep moving, we gotta keep going. Brandon could talk all day. Key cards you should keep in mind. These are pretty much auto include, especially for today's deck. High counts of Battle VIP Pass for those explosive turn ones. Nest Balls, because we need to search for our basics through the run of the game. This deck is all basic. And Artisan, which lets us search for Pokemon without a rule ball. So we need heavy search. Then of course, because we're gonna be moving through our flower selectings, we need heavy counts of switching cards. Switch card is a very useful card in mirror matches or anything where something else is spreading damage on you because it switches and it heals. So you can play around that. That is something that you have to more pilot, but we're not going to talk about that in this section. Gape Rope can serve as a boss's orders for your deck and a switch card for your deck. So it's a two in one. There's a lot of value there. So this is pretty much the crux of it. You're going to see in all of them. Now we're talking about the turbo variant. So we are primarily focused on a V package. We have Raikou for Lightning Week Pokemon. We have Drapion for Mew. I'm still respecting Mew. I don't care what you say. And of course we have Dragonite V. I call him the good stuff because he hits for 250 damage and that knocks out a lot of Pokemon. There's not many that want to see 250 damage smacked on the face from a basic. And then of course Sableye can clean up any awkward math along those lines and why it's called Turbo. This is why. So we are playing copies of Forest Seal Stone, which synergize well with our Pokemon V. Forest Seal Stone allows the Pokemon V this card is attached to a V-Star power. So once during your, the game, you may search for any card and put it into your deck. You can only use one V-Star power during the run of a game. That allows us to fine tune and fix our hand accordingly. Lost Vacuum allows us to th hit throw a card from our hand through the Lost Zone and get rid of either the Artisans or the Forest Seal Stones so we can fuel our Lost Zone count. This deck can reach as high as 10 turn one. There are scenarios where you can see all 10 cards in the Lost Zone the first turn of the game because of those two cards. That's why it's worth mentioning. It has the power to go to that next level early than any other deck. We call it Turbo for a reason. So some considerations and text that I'm not going to include in today's deck list that I want to briefly touch upon because depending on how you like to play the Pokemon trading card game. Halucha and Penny. Halucha I used for the mirror match when I was learning the deck. Flying entry. When you play this from your hand onto your bench, put two damage counters, one on each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So that can bring down things with 70 hit points to 60. So then Sableye can knock them both out. It helps in the mirror match. Penny just allows us to pick up Halucha or pick up Pokemon V that we no longer want on the board. So those two go very hand in hand. I find it just makes the mirror match easier when I didn't want to think because you have to jump through some hoops sometimes when both of you are throwing lost mines at each other. Of course, with the darkness takeover in Charizard and Single Strike Lugia because they are a very popular, very strong deck. Tropius allows you to hit for Grass Weakness. So rally back for a Grass and a Colorless. If one of your Pokemon were knocked out from damage, this does 120 damage instead of 30. So that can knock out your Tyranitar Vs. That can also hit into a Charizard EX and bring it down to 90 hit points. So that either allows you to finish off with a Sableye or it allows you, if it's in the active spot, to hit it with Moonlight Shuriken from a Radiant Greninja. And of course the Sky Seal Stone. So I mentioned Lugia one more time. It was a difficult matchup. We have Raikou in the deck, allowing Raikou to take three prizes, and Tropius to take two prizes off of Tyranitar allows us to more favor.
favorably trade five prizes for them taking three. That's why I've included these two together. They also help with the Mew matchup because the Sky So makes Drapion a little more of a threat. And any other V-Star matchups that I'm not thinking of, you would also have to include a Grass Energy, but that's too much. And of course, I've seen people try to splash Kyogre and Turbo together and kind of have some ugly hybrid. I'm going to briefly talk about it, but not too long. Kyogre, discard the top five cards of your deck, then choose two best Pokemon, and this does 50 for each energy discarded. So typically, you're burning to the bottom of your deck. Turbo is mostly just trying to take quick KOs. Kyogre's a slower paced deck. I get what they're trying to do here. Energy Recycler just allows us to make it so our last five base uh, deck cards in deck are energy. So I can see the world where you want to kind of splash them together. I know we might be moving towards that maybe we're not with all the Terra Pokemon coming. One Kyogre, two Recyclers, squeeze them into your list and you probably have to add a couple more basic energy, mostly just water and maybe another lightning, to the list I'm going to show you today. But we're not going to talk about that one too much. If you want to see me talk Kyogre, you want to see me drive myself crazy, mention it in the comments below. And the last one, I'm calling it Good Stuff. These ones don't have direct pairings, but they're cards you commonly see in Turbo Lost Box. Pokestop, because you're thinning your deck a little more aggressively, we do play a heavy count of item cards, whether it's switches, whether it's ball cards, whether it's recycling. So Pokestop just lets us burn through our deck a little easier. Protects versus Iono, Roxanne, late game, shenanigans, you name it. Sometimes you just have a bad hand and Pokestop goes right through it. I personally dislike this card. I am playing other means of shoring up my consistency. Pokestop is not for me, but it is a card you will see top players advocate for. So Pokestop is there. Don't rule it out entirely like I have. Keep it on the table. Try it out. You might like it. Roxanne, of course. So you need a comeback mechanic. So many of the counterpoints I've seen Turbo versus Kyogre is a Kyogre player will tell me that Roxanne is your comeback card. If you fall behind, you do not have much in terms of coming back. While that is true, we are not trying to let the game last that long. But Roxanne can give you that option, and if you want to squeeze one in, I definitely get it. Uh, a little sneak peek on the list, there's a Clara on the list, you can swap Roxanne for Clara, and all your problems solved. Roxanne's always a good card, because they're going to be taking prizes, and you want to punish them for that. So here's the skeleton. This is the 54 cards, we're going to quickly look over it. So we got Dracompies, one Cramorant, I've seen people pitch two, but many people are still playing the one. I'm in favor of the one, two Sableye, we call it Sableye Checkmate, because you have two of them, one on board, one inactive. And that way we're not overly concerned what your opponent's doing to your hand. Anything less is criminal. Anything more um, I could get that's Lost City respect, but we're gonna keep going. Manaphy, Greninja, Dragonite, all good stuff. VIP, Nest Ball, Artisan, Max counts on our cards. I'm sorry, we're going like consistency. I don't want to have one of those ugly unplayable hands or I'm gonna try to minimize them. Your switch carts and switches are your maxes. Three super rods because we're playing a very small amount of energy and I'm, trust me, you are playing a small amount, you'll feel it. Doing heavy ball because sometimes it just feels bad and sometimes it makes your life a hell of a lot easier. Opening hand, heavy ball, write down your six prizes. You don't have to check your deck. It saves you so much time, so much stamina you save mentally playing this deck by just having heavy ball in the list. Four Culvers, one boss. I don't know why people cut boss unless you're playing Kyogre. Please don't. There's too many Terra Pokemon going to be running around. So you'll need the boss. Clara, again, Roxanne, interchangeable, but it's just recovery. Two stone, two vacuum. This is your energy counts. What I've been told with the water is you want about two for Dragonite and two for Greninja. I double it just to make sure because there'll be some funky situations where if you play less than four, you'll be like, ah. Same thing with your other energies. You play a little bit more than what you want. Six cards you have in the flex spot. That's all good. Uh, th and then now we're going to jump into the list I settled on today. So we carried over those 54 cards. The remaining slots are filled out as follows. Raikou because I'm respecting Lugia and all the water decks. Mew because it is a very interesting attack attacker with genome hacking. So the key applications are copying Radiant Greninja if ours is gone. Uh, you can copy Lost Mine. You can also copy Giratina V-Star's key attack. There's more applications I'm thinking of, but being a free retreat, copy anything, and with the ability restart, if they don't path us down to a small hand size when they Iono, Mew can very well help us dig out of it. It can also help us dig early when we're trying to push for that aggressive count. Then we're playing an extra boss. I like me some boss. We're playing a Raihan because I like just grabbing energy. Sometimes I don't want to burn a Mirage Gate to set up a third four seal stone. So this is coming from my tendencies back with Inteleon Urshifu. I will defend it in the comments. You play a lot of funky cards in this deck. Sometimes you just want to see four seal stone. It also is an additional target for Lost Vacuum to uh, help push your count early and often. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I just added in some stuff to shore up the back line. Drapion, again, I'm respecting you until the day I die. Uh, that deck has just burned me too many times, and I will put the link in the description for this one here. I'm going to talk about overview and gameplay in the next section, but we need to talk about it. So some people always ask, so the hardest part of this deck is deciding what do I need to loss home? What do I do? Mentally, I've gotten to this point where I've divided everything off into like a three-tiered system. So you've got your first priority. Never ever discard these or loss on these cards. You're gonna use them. They're good stuff's cards. Tough choice. I get it. Sometimes you can squeak away with dropping one in there, 
but then you have to be ready to play with a little less on your plate. That's fine. Still winnable. And of course, depends on the matchup. If you're playing a non-Mew matchup, you can throw the Drapion, for example. Do they help first this deck? If they answer that question, yes. How much do they help? Very much. Don't toss them. If not at all, the easiest tosses ever. All right. First example. Never ever touch, toss these ones. So Dragonite, Super Odds. Super Odds are three energy. So this makes it almost like an 18 energy deck if you keep all the rods. Sableye, he is your king. He is the best attacker in your deck. He deals with so many things. Manaphy, there are so many decks running Radiant Greninja and Mew. So Manaphy just feels like one. Of course, the max one copy. So these ones here hurt. Try not to put these in the Lost Zone if you can, but sometimes it's this or something worse, like a Dragonite. Make sure you've done your prize checking. So if you toss one Water Energy, it's not the end of the world. If you toss one Psychic Energy, it's not the end of the world. Lightning Energy, please make sure there's another one in the deck before you toss this one. That's why I'm telling you. Somebody will tell you to do a blind um, flower selecting to start the game if you have a card that lets you search your deck or search your prizes do that first more information is better in this deck i don't care what anybody says mirage gates uh we usually only need two to three in the run of a game four is if we've fallen behind and we need to push pulverous once you get through two or three of them, you've typically hit 10, so it's a pretty expendable. And sometimes you'll Colverse and have a couple Colverses in your hand, so one of them will have to go. But typically just one is all you really need to toss away. Try not to toss too many of them. Even if you've hit 10, just save them for later. They're little pushes in the, in the late game. These ones here all depend on what you're playing against. Raikou, again, if it's a dead card, it's a very good card, so it's hard to, to justify sometimes. We usually only need one boss, that's why I'm playing two, so we can throw away one of them. Sometimes we don't even need boss because Sableye is that damn good. Raihan, uh, depends. The Mirage Gates we usually get there. Raihan is like a fifth or a pseudo Mirage Gate. Grapeon, if you're not playing a Mew matchup or you're not playing a matchup where it pulls its weight, very easy to include. But if you're playing Mew, you kind of don't want to throw it. So these are some cards here. It, I hope it helps when you're deciding what your flower selecting is. What's of importance and what's not of important? If I mentioned, if I didn't mention it it's more than likely safe to throw away your vip pass is after you've set up your nest ball is after you've set up so on so forth this is just kind of a small chunk of the deck you should be aware of and now we're going to jump into the matchup guide now we get to talk the fun part we get to talk matchups so before i jump into specific matchups i am going to cut back to eight because those are the ones that i think are most relevant how you typically run the deck in a blind meta i.e if you're playing it online or you're not sure what your phone is playing if you win the coin flip you want to go first the reason is, is we can more appropriately pace out our turn with our Comfies, with our Colrus, and so on. So that way we can more readily hit the turn to Sableye. We want to end our turn with one to two Comfies, preferably two. If we see a deck that we really want to feast the Lost Mine on, we will push for the third Comfy. So you want to end your turn on two to three Flower Selectings. So that means we're coming in next turn with already three cards in the Lost Zone. And if we can preserve it and either... If our hand is bad, we almost want to play some mind games where it makes it look like we have a really good hand. You, you, you'll figure that out, like what makes your hand look good? So if you're throwing away a particular card, it's a bit of bluffing, or if we can sit on a chorus. So we're typically trying to end off there and put ourselves, if we're playing a particular matchup where we need the mana fee, bench the mana fee, show we've got it all, like make our hand look better than it is. Um, that's going first and then after that you're just going to try to advance your lost zone count without overextending again don't overextend unless you see an opportunity to push and take a size of believe like there has to be a large enough reward for you to start throwing caution to the wind but that's what this deck can do if you go second which you lose the coin flip which happens we're not going to pretend like it doesn't i am mentally prepared to go second with this deck because it's just just enough play time what i'm looking for is I'm assessing the board. I have to understand what my opponent is playing. I have to be somewhat familiar with the deck. Why they consider this deck more of an intermediate or an advanced is because you're playing a toolbox, you're playing a handful of attackers that are tailored to the situation at hand. So if we see a stage two deck, if we're looking at Gardevoirs or uh, Backscalibers or uh, Charizards, we need to see if they've benched the Manaphy. We need to see if they've only played one basic Pokemon. We need to know, okay, if we dig a little harder, can we really take them out of this game? If they bench the Manaphy and one Charmander, obviously we're not going to like push for that. But sometimes they will play a starter Pokemon, something else, and one to two Charmanders or whatever their evolving Pokemon are. That's when we're going to push for the three Combees, the Colrus, and either use Forest Stone to get the Vacuum or use the Vacuum to toss away a Stadium or our Forest Stone and push for seven and Mirage Gate and take them out of the game. If you're playing a really slow deck like Arceus V-Star, which if they are still seeing play at the time of recording, if you see a window, you should be taking advantage of it. Those decks 
are usually unfavorable, but so you have to push, you have to be on the front foot with them. Sometimes a turn one Dragon Gale from your Dragonite V can take them out of the game before they're ready. If you take out their key attacker because you escape roped it or they mistakenly left it in the active, you can make them concede right then and there. So that's what I mean. Turbo Lost Box has been the only deck in the past four years where I've had my opponents concede because I took a sizable lead at the start of the game that I don't think they, they could recover from. That's what you need to know. And that's before we even talk about it. So if you go first, you want to pace yourself uh, two, three at the end of the first turn and then a Culverus and then pace yourself. And then on your turn two, at least Mirage Gate is open, right? That's what you want. But on your turn one going second, if your cards play well enough, you can push for that Mirage Gate turn one and you can do some nutty things. If you don't see it or you don't see a sizable trade, like if the, the most you're going to accomplish is a uh, Cramorant, okay, go for four or five cards or six cards or however you think, but prime yourself for the next turn because next turn is Sableye time. Next time is, you know, it's, it's winning time. You walk into that mentality. So with that said, again, we showed you cards that you should and shouldn't lost own. We gave you a general approach for pacing for that turn one and knowing when to pull the ripcord and when to back off. Now we're going to look at some of the most popular decks being played. First one we're going to knock out right out of, out of the way, Intel Urshifu. This is probably your worst matchup on the spread. There's not much you can do. You have to really push on them and take, take some advantage from them early. Sometimes a Mirage Gate, uh, Radiant Greninja can knock them out. You want to keep their Octillery's off the board if you can help it because again they're looking for the double gunner they're looking for the metacham we don't play a means of recovery or uh reset so when they start accruing assets in their hand or cards that they want or anything like that we can't do much to stop them so i'm not going to dwell on that too much raiku is a, he a very valuable attacker sableye is a very strong attacker don't put it on your v maxes because they'll use cheryl to heal it off use it on the other pokemon deal with those strategically take out their consistency and usually they just run out of steam so they can take the yoga loop turn but they might just not have anything left so that's one thing we're not going to dwell on that one the next one is very ugly so we're going to talk about colorless lugia this one is seeing an uptick but right now we're kind of banking on some ride-ons to keep them in check i know it always feels bad when you're banking on another matchup so how we usually approach this because we're not playing skystone or anything like that we in intend to use Raikou to hopefully, turn one, take out their Lugia before they can V-Star. If they can V-Star, we have to then shift gears, and Raikou is the only one. So you typically only want one, two prizer on the board, so that way you make them work through all of your prizes. They take two, they take one, they take another one, they take another one, they've taken five prizes. Then you can typically set yourself up, either it's Sableye Math, or it's Cramorant Hits, or anything like that, set yourself up. So that way in the last turn you can bring out the Mew and take a big KO or you can bring out the Sableye or the Raikou or the Dragonite to take a final KO. If you take out their Archeops their life becomes more difficult because they don't have the means of acceleration. Snorlax cannot be hit by Sableye so don't do that. That's a problem that's why this deck gives us fits and we're not going to dwell on it too much but essentially the Archeops be it through Radiant Greninja and Sableye are strong ones to take out. A Lugia V-Star then it's on you to read the board and say, how am I getting my last two prizes? Did they make a mistake? Did they put um, Aluminion on board that they didn't get rid of with Collapse Stadium? Did they put too many multi-prize Pokemon in play, like two Lugias and Aluminion, and they couldn't clear them all? That's another one. Sometimes you can eat those, and Raikou might get double dipping in that one game. It's a very strong card. It's not the best matchup, but again, it's something you can consider. We are still rambling. Next up, we're going to switch to Single Strike Tyranitar. I gave you some text with some grass options. That one is also a little dicey. I would consider playing Sky Stone in this deck over the third four seal if you're worried about Lugia. Again, it's going to have a little bit of a hype window because we have been praising the hell out of Mew EX and it is such a good card in Lugia. So if you're playing the Sky Stone, Raikou on a Lugia V-Star takes three prizes. You figure out how you're going to take that fourth prize, whether you have to... Uh, smack into them with a Cramorant and a Sableye, and then you want to close out your game by taking out a Tyranitar V with your Mew EX. So that one is there. Or because if they're gonna, if you're gonna use Dragonite, what they're gonna do is you're gonna attach the V Guard energy to it and take Dragonite out of that math. So you either have to set them up right away with the Sableye after the Raikou takes a knockout, or you have to prepare yourself and use Mew to close out. As long as you're pacing your two prizers, 
Lugia is not too bad, but remember, they do very nutty things. Both decks can take themselves out of the game before it even starts because they're relying on so many coin flips. They're relying on putting Pokemon in the discard pile, and like Mesagoza, capturing Aroma. Sometimes the flips don't go their way, and they never get into the game, and you have to pounce on that. You have to read the board and know when you want to push. The Lugia, Tyranitar, and figure out how you're getting your last two prizes. It could be a Sableye and Radiant Greninja to take their energy off the board so they can't use their one prizers. But the one prizers are usually a distraction. They're not something you need. Stone Journer can't attack twice in a row. Yveltal usually doesn't see play. That's fine. Let them smack us with the Yveltal. Sableye has to deal with the Archeops. And if they mistakenly overbench multi-prize Pokemon, we play double boss. They're not expecting double boss, so take advantage of that. So that's three of the big ones out of the way. Next one, Fusion Mew. So we are playing Drapion. Drapion will get us Mew. That's three prizes. How are we getting the last three prizes? So sometimes they will bench Meloetta or they get stuck with it. We can't rely on that. So then we have to prize map. Again, Sky Stone is looking awfully tempting if you're, you're seeing Mew because then it makes our prize map very easy. Dragon Gale can take out one Genesect, keeps us the four prizes. And then Drapion with the Sky Stone can take out the Mew VMAX. They couldn't hit us in Roxanne turn. Iono to four is still not very bad. Try not to bench your Sableyes early. They do play one to two Lost City. So you want to be able to, you know, set your account, push aggressively. If you can get a Genesect early, that's great. That's four, that's two prizes down, but then you have to decide, okay, so two Genesect is 380 health. They might have a couple switch cards. They might have a crystal cave. Is that worth it? You can also kind of skew the prize trade there. If you can knock out their little mule, you're okay. But typically Raikou and, and Dragonite with your two bosses can take out four prizes for you and then it's just finding the nest ball or finding the stadium bump and getting your drapeon in there for the mew you are going to most likely have to take seven prizes unless they make the mistake and put meloetta but don't assume your opponent is going to misplay you have to assume they're going to play to their outs so seven prizes unfortunately but mew is still a winnable card if you want to make it a six prize game add the sky stone over the third forest it is what it is who do we got next all right so we are looking and we're going to lump them all together here Lost Zone Box, Giratina Lost Box, and Kyogre Lost Box all pretty much play the same. It's a race to who can get to their Sableyes first. All of the decks will want to run that. Lost Mind Math can fix so much. Everybody's going to be playing their Manaphys. It, it's just a no-brainer. Like, if you're not playing Manaphy in the mirror, you want to take the Radiant Greninja out of the way. So you want to be getting up there as fast as possible, and then you want to be putting 7 on the Manaphy and 5 on a Comfy or you want to be dealing with the Sableye right away and then putting four on a comb feed because when they use the switch cart, it's going to heal three. So don't disperse your damage. Just go seven and five or eight and four, depending on what you're dealing with. At that point, it's pretty much straightforward. We don't play hand disruption. So Kyogre's going to look for that when you get to your three prize turn. If a deck bench locks you because you can't rely on the skill of the pilot, you assume they're going to do their best and you're going to play to your outs. But if they make a mistake, you need to know when to recognize it and when to capitalize. So if they overextend and they don't have room for Sableye, don't give them an, uh, an opportunity to get that on the board. Spread your Sableye around time and time again. Set everything up. They only have four switch cards. They can only heal off 120 damage. After that, you can go for checkmate. You can go for a big turn. That's why Sableye is so oppressive. That's why we play Clara is I keep seeing people bench logging themselves. And if that's a rookie mistake, I'm going to capitalize on it. If the player's a little more experienced, again, you have to set the tempo. Don't play Dragonite in these matchups because Sableye will hurt you. Dragon Gale hurts your, your own bench, and Sableye can just clean up on their end. Raikou does carry its weight. If you're going to put your four Seal Stone, put it on the Raikou. It allows consistency. Again, we're still racing to that Lost Mine. You want to do that. Double Sableye is fantastic. If you don't like the Mirror Match, I mentioned Penny and Hulucha earlier in the video. Um, but again, it's those who manage their Switch cards and those who manage your lost mine. When you're making strong plays with those, you can come back from it, you can claw back, you can do that. And don't be afraid to sponge a hit with Raikou because the switch card can heal it off and they have to either take their pick. What are they going for? Are they going for the Sableye or are they going for the Raikou? Because you can still keep punishing them by using the Sableye if they opt to deal with your Raikou rather than your, your Sableye. So don't overbench with your multi-prizers. Raikou is your choice um, there. Manaphy the Kyogre don't play it right away when you see like they're getting close then because they play a little slower than we do They do so we're gonna they're gonna play a little slower when you when you see the right opportunity Maybe they got three or four cards then drop the Manaphy then make them have to address that constantly play them with them 
and just to punish them there. With Giratina, big distinction, they're playing Path, Roxanne. So when you take your first two prizes right there, don't rush down to your third and fourth prizes. Sometimes you just sprinkle a Manaphy and let them knock you out. Then you, spr uh, you sprinkle another Sableye and then you take both prizes. You want to make sure your deck is even thinner because they're going to Roxanne you. They are, it's, it's just coming, you know it. It's Death, Taxes, and Roxanne Path with Giratina. And then how you close out and you get your last two prizes with them is Mew EX. So Mirage Gate, Attach Return, or Raihan, Hunt the Mirage Gate, so on, and you Stadium Bump. Mew can also use Restart at any point to fit draw you out of a bad Iono, but you typically want to copy their Giratina V-Star at the end. So you take your first four prizes through Sableyes and Cramorants, and then you take the last one off of either a softened up Giratina through uh, Sableye with the, Gear with the Dragonite, or you want to take it with the Mew, because you can copy Star Requiem. Sometimes you can Star Requiem their only Giratina off the board, and Mew gets four prizes before it's dealt with, because you can also copy Lost Mine with uh, Mew, Mew V EX, because it's a 180 hit point Lost Mine Pokemon. So that's the other one. So we've covered the Lost Boxes. They are pretty much 50-50, so I'm not going to stress over those. But your key resources, Super Rods, Manaphys, Switch Cards. All three decks pretty much function similarly. We are racing to our 10 count faster than they are, and we have to use Sableye to clean those up. Okay, next two up. Maridon Flaffy, you got to think of this deck in twos. Two, 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 okay? Once you think of the deck in twos, you go, all right, how am I getting my first two prizes? Here's the one that I'm first thinking, is we can we can take out both the Manaphy, uh, the Flaffies. I forgot they were sheep for a second. Take out both the Flaffies with Radiant Greninja. That's two. Dragonite can take a Raikou, right? Even with the Brave Charm, Dragonite can take the Raikou. That's the big one there. Save him. And then you're asking, what about the last two? Take your pick. Lost Vacuum takes the Brave Charm off of Maridon. Mew EX can copy that. That's six prizes right there. We do need both bosses because the Escape Rope, they're going to put different things in the active, so on and so forth. Sableye doesn't carry its weight, but you can also pepper damage while you're trying to find your big Pokemon, because as long as you keep them on an odd prize count, they can't just go two, 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 respond back on you. We want to go that way, but we don't want them to go that way. So we want to make them take almost like a seven prize game. So that's there. Cramorant early sets it up. Sometimes you might have to take a seven prize game, and that's okay, where you hit into a Raikou with the Cramorant, and then you set it up with the Radiant Greninja the next turn. Um, that's okay. They only have two switch cards. Typically, we'll, we'll make that work. Uh, who's the next one that I'm thinking of? Rhydon is pretty, pretty good, though. Like, I'm not worried about that one. Chen Pao, Baxcalibur, if they're still playing Canceling Cologne, that could be a bit of an issue. The biggest things is assess the problems of their board. If they're playing Palkia, that's free prizes for Raikou. Chen Pao can come in with a Dragon Gale, so that's about four prizes. And then it's figuring out how we get our last two. So are we going to do, again, the seven prize game similar to Maridon? Did we have the opportunity for a Lost Mine early? It's how you're getting your last four. This is where I find the uh, four, the three Super Rods come in handy, is we'll recycle Dragonite and get double dipping out of them. Uh, other times we'll get, I don't find uh, Greninja and Sableye as helpful in this matchup, unless there's 60 hit point Frigibacks, because you go what? Even if it's 70, so you go Lost Mine 7, and then you put 5 elsewhere, and you can put five on another Frigibax, or you can put it on a Baxcalibur, and that makes it boss knockout with Cramorant. So then you're just trading two for two, and you've dealt with their acceleration. So then every Chen Pao KO gets even more crucial. So then they're going to flip their Star Portal, but as soon as they flip the Star Portal, that's fine, because then Dragon Gale can come in and deal with the Chen Pao. They have no more Frigibax, they have no more Chen Pao. Palkia is limited based on the size of your bench, so if you leave two spots open on your bench and they fill theirs, it's capped at 220. So Palkia cannot knock you out that way. That's the big one. Again, it all sounds great in theory, but you have to be keeping in mind that you have to gun down the Baxcalibers. Once that, that deck loses those, they come off the board. Uh, who was the last one? And then we saved, of course, the, the most pain in the behind for last. So we're going to talk Gardevoir because that one's a little more 50-50. So Gardevoir here, you're looking for an opening. So if, you want, if you're if you playing the game and you're looking, if you lose the coin flip and go second, you're looking to see, did they bench Manaphy? Did they, if they didn't, we are going to try to push for Radiant Greninja, Moonlight Shuriken, and pick apart their board, double Ralts. You'd be surprised. 
Sometimes they prize it, sometimes they, they just can't get to it. And that right there can win you the game outright. If they bench the Manaphy, what we have to do, and I'll say this now, don't Cramorant the Cresselia. That's a wasted attack. What you want to do instead is save the Cramorant for later, and you're going to bench triple Comfy, and you're going to Culrus. So you're going to end your turn on five. Why? Because they're not going to evolve all of their Ralsas the following turn. They're still going to bench the Manaphy, and what we're going to do the following turn is we are going to get to 10 with our Sableye. We are going to lost mine off one of their Curlias, and then we're going to take it onto something else. We're, we're basically going to take out the Curlias. Why are we taking out the Curlias and not worrying about the Gardevoirs as much? The Curlias are their draw engine. They're going to Iono you, and then they're going to expect to be able to refinement their way out of it. You can't do that if they're not on the board. It makes them have to evolve up because they're going to obviously cheat a rare candy. They're going to discard a rare candy. They're not going to realize that we want to take their draw off the board. So every time they hit us with an Iono, it hurts because they have to set up their Curlias. They have to find the Gardevoir EX. They have to get all the energy in the discard pile and they can only Moon Glow reverse you so many times. So if you're Sableye taking out the Curlias, then they run out of steam very quickly. Um, avoid your multi-prize Pokemon until you have to. Obviously, we're going to get them in there once in a while. I would rather Raikou off and hit into... Oh, God. Who do we want to hit? I'd rather hit into the EX with the Raikou than uh, Cramoran into the, the Cresselia, which just feels bad, right? Because they're going to retreat it, collapse Stadium it off, and then you don't get anything for it, and you wasted a turn. Um, again, the, the late game will be very dicey. Mew EX is phenomenal for copying attacks, too. So you can copy their Radiant Greninja... You can force them to really bench clunkily and pick them apart. Because if they have to bench the Radiant Greninja and the Manaphy, then you just pick apart the Ralsas because they have less room to work with. If they have the Cresselia on the board as well, they can only have three Ralsas on the board. Pick that apart. Come on, eat good. But that's Gardevoir. The Iono sometimes just get you and that's all you can do. Last but not least is Charizard. So this one is the diciest. I'm not going to sit there and pretend like I have a clean answer. If we're not playing the Grass Package, it's an uphill battle. You're looking, if you go second, you're looking for an opportunity to save, uh, lost mine them quickly. Um, their math goes, as soon as we start taking prizes, we're in a bit of trouble. Sometimes I don't want to take prizes. I want to soften things up or I because I want to Dragon Gale, realistically, I want to Dragon Gale one of their Charizards. It's going to hit me for, with a Choice Bell 210, that's fine. He's going to soak the hit. Then I would like to hit either a Pidgeot or a second Charizard because I'm going to need a way to work through two Charizards. It's unfortunate. It's the way it goes. We need to work through two Charizards. If we don't want to take any prizes. So then we take two hits with the Dragon Gale if we can, realistically, perfect world. And then we will then come in with the Sableye. So we're going to have to start Lost Mining and Lost Mining. And then they're going to send them both to the Lost Zone with Lost City. Unfortunately, that's the way it is. And we're looking for as best as we can to get our first... We have to get five prizes when they get five prizes. So you have to figure out how you're going to get your five prizes. Are we going uh, Raikou, Boss, uh, Pidgeot? That's two prizes. And then we take a Mew. And then again, I mentioned we had to punch a Charizard and then Sable it. So they've taken out the Raikou. They have taken out the Cramorant. That's three and then they take out the Sableye is four, and then we want to run another Sableye and hopefully get them down to five prizes where they are doing 330 damage. And then all we have to do is slap down the Mew, Mirage Gate to it, or Raihan, attach, whatever, and then we're going to Burning Darkness, copy that shit back, and take the last prize because we have to make them take all five. We need to take all five. Otherwise, it's not going to go well because the Lost City makes this very complicated. If you want to simplify the matchup, go Grass. Honest to God, go Grass. Trop Tropius helps. The Sky Stone helps. If they're still playing Arceus, you can take three prizes there. It's a lot to like. But again, those are the matchups, guys. I did ramble. There was a lot to cover. Lost Box is a very intricate deck. It's very interactive. If someone tells you it's a hard deck, it's only because they're asking you to be involved. Some people like to play the game half-heartedly, half in the bag. Um, they're not quite there. You need to be invested in your game because you're actively keeping tabs on it. Is that perceived as hard? Certainly. But I think if you like the game and you're involved, it's a very quick pickup. And the more reps you get, the better you get with it. There's no deck in Pokemon you can't pick up with enough practice. So if you enjoy the content, guys, let me know down below. 
If you stuck around until the end, I apologize for the length of the video. I'll try to keep them shorter in the future. And until next time, guys, take care.